Hi everyone, uh, welcome to my video on how to paint and weather World War II German jerry cans. Uh, in this video uh, we'll have a look at basic techniques um, all the way up to advanced and extreme weathering to create a look that's right for you and your build. Now feel free to copy my work uh, but try and improve on what I do and create your own finish for your model. So let's have a look at uh, the jerry can itself. There we go. Now, back in the 1930s, Germany wanted to design a whole new way of carrying fuel and came up with the Wehrmacht canister. Now, these are the early design ones um, from Tamiya. Um, the Germans designed these with uh, a weld seam down the middle, as you can see, all the way around. And what that did was to uh, stop the leakages. Now, they had three handles at the top. And the reason for this was that it was designed so that you could carry two in one hand um, when they were empty, so four all together. And obviously when they were full, you'd pick them up with the, the, the middle handle and be able to pick, uh, carry two at a time. Now the crosses on the side, they were put on there to actually strengthen the can. And underneath the, the cap itself, uh, there was a little uh, funnel, so you wouldn't actually have to use a tube or anything to fill up uh, the vehicle so a, a lot more easier to use and at the back here the design with the little kink at the top that would create an air pocket um, so if they did go into the water they'd carry on floating. As you can see the Tamiya uh, early jerry can is nicely detailed with the uh, Kraftstoff insignia on there as well as the date stamp. Um, as the war progressed um, the jerry can was used for oil water um, and had different makers marks and insignia on so if you're doing a later version of a German model then obviously do your research and make sure that um, you have the correct jerry can for your particular build. These were the um, jerry cans that are used uh, made by Tamiya uh, the early type nice little kit went together very well indeed um, with no issues so Let's have a look at uh, the controversial subject of colour on the jerry can. First off, please don't get hung up on the, what the specific colour of a German jerry can should be. Because as you can see from these photos here, over a period of time, the shade, wear and tear, dirt, general use of the can will affect its colour greatly. So first off, the uh, Germans would um, paint the um, jerry cans in uh, red oxide um, to prime up the can before it was given a uh, coat. Um, later in the war, when paint got scarce, there are examples whereby they weren't even given a top coat and they were just sent out uh, as red primer cans. Um, the three main colours that you're going to be looking at is um, Ordnance Tan, uh, which is your sort of dark yellow, uh, Dunkel Gelb type of colour. Next you'll be looking at um, Ordnance Blue, um, sort of dark uh, blue-grey type colour, something like that. And then the third one would be your Ordnance Green, um, like Field Grau. Um, and that would give you um, a starting point, shall we say, as far as um, the colour of your jerry can is going to be. So let's have a look at uh, the painting of the jerry cans themselves. Um, what you need to do is to uh, set them up in such a way that they're easy for you to hold. Um, I personally just drill a little hole in the base and then insert the cocktail stick. Um, and then that gives me a, a nice easy way to be able to hold the jerry can while I paint it. And then I can put it back in the styrene later on uh, to leave it to dry. Now as you can see here, um, I've started um, preparing uh, each of the jerry cans um, with a primer coat. The grey primer coat, um, I use the Badger grey. As you can see from all of my cans I've avoided using black. Um, I do find that black on uh, a small item as such as a jerry can does affect the base coats that you use because um, I do put on thin coats. Um, so there's no 
black here at all. Um, then we have some of these which have been primed uh, for, for various reasons which you will see later. Um, this one here um, has been used with uh, the MIG One Shot Primer which is a very good primer indeed. That gives you the brown oxide and then for the red oxide uh, these particular ones here that will be using uh, the Mission Models Primer. Not a great fan of the Missions model, uh, but I bought the pot so I need to use it up. So this is an ideal situation to do that in. Now on some of these Joe cans you'll see that um, I've actually used black primer just to do a little bit of shading. Um, that was done with a brush uh, along the seam lines and also underneath the handles. And I'll come on to the benefit of that further into the video. Apologies for the noisy compressor, uh, but we have the failed grail now in the airbrush um, using a um, 3 mil needle at medium pressure. Let's just go along the sides, along the top. And there we go, very simple process. So, with that process done it's just a simple matter of removing the masking tape and we'll do that on both sides and there we go that gives you your first banding so what we're going to be doing next is the second modulation color and the aim here is to do it down the side strips here so again it's a simple matter of masking using the Tamiya tape the central area so with the central area masked off now uh, using exactly the same process and this time I used a smaller 7mm tammy tape which very conveniently uh, creates that band around the side now we're going to be going slightly lighter now. Um, now when you lighten your colours, um, try not to use white. Um, it's not very effective. Um, I like to sort of use light greys. Um, we've got ivory there. Um, well, a nice, quite, uh, one that works quite well is um, flat flesh as well. And similarly, if, if, if you're making your colours darker, um, don't use black. <clears throat> Maybe use uh, sort of different shades of brown just to... Um, get the, that, that darker look. So what will happen now is that I will obviously still got the filled grail in the airbrush and I will just add little drops of uh, the lighter colour until I'm happy that the shade is just slightly lighter than what I've put around the banding. Also remember that where the mask tape is at the moment is going to be the lightest colour. So just bear that in mind when mixing up the, your next colours. I've allowed uh, the airbrush to be cleaned out a little bit with the darker colour and now I have the, the lighter colour coming through. So on the flat surface we'll do those bandings. And there we go. As you can see you've got that slightly different shade now. So we'll do the other side and then we'll do the central part. So on to the last section now obviously you have to wait for the paint dry before you put the masking tape over um, so in my particular case I've used a hair dryer to speed up the process and as you can see the masking tape is the same size as before. Now I've added a couple more drops of uh, flesh to the mixture so let's put the final central colour on There we go, and we'll take the masking tape off of that. And there you have it. Let's just get the blue screen and a very nicely multi toned 
jerry can straight out of the factory. So what we'll now do is do a couple of highlights. Now what I've done is I've got a fine brush um, and using the uh, what's left in the airbrush, the lighter colour, I've just put on the handles and highlighted the cap on the jerry can as well. Once dry, uh, because we want to create that nice new shiny factory look, we will now give the jerry can a coat of satin varnish. So with the gloss coat now uh, dried, what we can do is just add the final touch, which is a very simple little pin wash. Um, here we're going to be using oils, um, Viridian Hue, which is a nice dark green. Um, I've put it on the little bit of cardboard for it to soak in and then what we'll do using some thinners we'll apply the pin wash so I've managed to get my consistency that I want so it's just a matter of very carefully into the grooves And let the capilla reaction go all the way along for the cross. There we go. And then we'll turn over. And as you can see, it's working its way along. And don't forget the seams. And I'll carry on and finish that off. As you can see, there's a little bit of uh, side spill. Very easy just to remove that with thinner. And that's the very first one done. That's your factory look. And I'll post some stills of the final jerry can now, I didn't take the Germans uh, long to realize that they could also use the jerry can to uh, carry water in um, now this particular kit from Tamiya these are fuel cans um, so they have the writing of craft store at the top so if you want to be a hundred percent correct and uh, have a water jerry can then you need to find one that has VASA on it, W A S E R, to denote the fact that it would have been carried with water. However, it would have been quite easy to have get it mixed up if the only thing that you are looking at is the actual writing um, on the can. So, what the Germans did is they actually put a white cross, not only to differentiate the fact that it was carrying water, but also so you could see it at night time. Now, you'll have two different designs uh, which we'll look at. Uh, the first one is uh, where the white cross will just come up just short of the word of Wasser and also there are um, examples of where the can where they put the white cross all the way up as well. So there's two distinct different types of crosses that you can add to the jerry can. Uh, the actual banding does wrap around uh, on the edges but doesn't actually come uh, to touch so again we'll make sure that's achieved when we do the masking so with the uh, next factory look jerry can I've gone for the uh, Dunkel Gelb yellow dark yellow color and again done the modulation on this one uh, this is usually associated uh, with the uh, DAK the Deutsche Afrika Corps um, however, this colour was used throughout the uh, the war. Um, and what we're going to do here, even though it is a fuel can, for the sake of the video, uh, we're going to put a white cross on it. Um, so you can get an idea of how to do that for the water cans. So as before, I've used the 10mm uh, Tamiya tape uh, to do the central band. As you can see on the edges, I've added a little strip because we don't want the white band to 
join up and really for this it's just a matter of using just white because this is coming straight out of the um, factory we want the, 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 the cross to be nice and clear so there we have the first band very pleased with that, that's come out well um, we'll dry that with the hair dry now and then we'll mask it off and do the vertical banding so with the uh, central band dry um, I've now masked off the vertical banding and as you can see here this one's slightly shorter because so we're going for, for the shorter cross look um, and your masking tape should be just underneath the uh, wording at the top of the can so let's fire up the airbrush and we'll quickly do these there we go and we'll leave that to dry take off the masking tape and we'll do the final reveal as with the um, other factory look jerry can um, this one's had a coat of uh, gloss uh, satin varnish applied uh, which is now dry and we're just going to finish it off with um, a pin wash with naples yellow hue um, so we're just exactly the same way as before along the axes and if you remember along the seam lines as well and that's that can finished um, um, so that's two down and I'll put some pictures up of that one finished as well Now for the third can we're going to go for the factory look again. Um, I've given this one a, a coating um, of the Feld Grau, around 6006. German green. Um, but this time as you can see I haven't done any modulation because um, we're going to jazz it up a bit um, with oils. Um, we're going to do some pin washes um, and just just make it a little bit more warm bit of dust dust and that sort of effect um, so first of all what we'll do is um, add some shading to the actual um, green um, on the jerry can um, as you can see I've, I've got a little palette of, of greens and browns and dusts etc colors on there um, so it's just a matter of um, applying very lightly let's just start down here at the bottom just a bit of color um, and then get getting the blending brush and just blending that in and really just going around creating your shadows as and where you feel it should be obviously dark along the bottom just get that blended in maybe a little bit around the middle parts and again that that all blended in so it's just a matter of applying and blending with your brush along the edges with the darker colour this will take a little time to do so leave it with me and I'll come back to you in a second so there we have the dark green being applied as you can see some nice shadow effects there so with that done what we now need to do is to lighten things up a little bit so we use the light green here now I forgot to mention the light green um, is permanent green light and the darker green was viridian hue and the pin wash at the end will be done with burnt umber um, so let's do some lighter shadows 
mainly on the more exposed areas. Again, it's a matter of just applying and blending that in. I'm not going to do the size because I want to keep those dark. So just concentrate on the open panels. Far too much. Far too much. Not to worry, it's oils, so just clean off your brush and take the excess off. It's a more of an annoyance and a problem. So, with the light and dark green shading done, uh, what we'll now do is add a little bit of dust. Just do some down the bottom there um, use a um, different blending brush here as if it's been stored or it's in transit on the back of one of your vehicles just get that all blended in and we go Again, it's all about application and just blending as you go, just to create that look that you're after. A little bit further up here. There we are. Just gives you that little bit of extra subtle tones. Just try and blend that in a bit more. Lovely. So now what we'll do, we'll go on to the actual pin wash using the um, burnt umber. And we'll just get that in there. A little bit more thinner. And let that flow nicely. And obviously once you've done knit the cross, do the seams as well. So leave that with me and I'll just finish that off. Okay, for the next one we're going to have a bit of fun and we're going to go old school. Uh, we're going to dry brush this one. Um, so I've got a bit of the um, dark blue grey. And we'll just put some on the widish brush. Get rid of as much of the excess as possible. And then we'll start working on this. As you can see, you really want to go for the sort of frosting type of look don't want to do it over dirt and then just keep repeating going backwards and forwards get a bit more on that take it off start again what I'm also going to do um, we're going to do some highlighted dry brushing as well and the good old days before pigments turned up we're going to get some pastels out and then again doing it old school gives you another look and um, that may be of interest to you or you can adapt to use the best way that you want to on your particular model so leave this with me and I'm sure I'll come back to you once it's fully dry brushed so there we go no time at all 
one dry brushed jerry can. Who needs air brushes, eh? So, what we're going to do now is do some of the dry brushing highlights. Um, so we're going to add a little bit of flat flesh. Just to lighten up the tone a bit. we go so a little bit lighter take it off the brush apply take it off and that's very carefully too much on there let's get the edges done no, not happening so let's put some more on now there we go that's better so we're getting a nice edge now to that. Do some of the raised areas. And the way I like the dry brushing is it really does highlight the, the lettering. So that's coming up really nice. Okay, it shouldn't take me too long to do this, and then I'll be able to show you how it all went. So there we go, two or three turns with the dry brush. Hopefully you can see that. Creates lots of wear and tear with the brush marks on the raised edges there. And on the top as well. Very subtle, but very effective. So we're going to do uh, old school pin wash. Uh, just a matter of getting some acrylics in this particular case I'm using dark brown and we'll just add a little bit to the pot there and then what we need to do is to water this down so it's very much like ink so it's going to flow now the problem with acrylic washes if you get anything in the areas where you don't want it to be uh, you need to remove it pretty sharpish otherwise it will stain so we'll have this um, wider brush dipped in water um, to hand um, so if we do need to take any spillage off we can do so straight away so let's get the jerry can and let's very carefully start doing the pin wash I uh, don't think that's watery enough let's get some more water in there and there we go Very easy, straightforward, because it is so watery you may need to do a couple of runs at it. As you know with acrylics it dries very quickly indeed. And we've got a little bit of spillage there, so get the wide brush and just take that off. And just let that dry. So... Leave that with me and I'll work all the way around and get that finished. Finally for this jerry can we're going to add um, some pigments, pastels, whatever you like to call it. Um, this is quite a nice selection that I have here. Um, saves you having to buy all those pigments. Um, you can just make your own dust and pigments yourselves using pastels. Just make sure you buy the chalk ones and not the oil ones. Um, because you need to, to have that crumbly texture. So all we need to do is um, just get your piece of sandpaper and it's just a, a simple matter of sanding some off. We'll add a, a variety of colours just to try and uh, create that sort of dusty, dusty look. There we go. And we'll go for one more, we'll go for a darker brown, there we go. There we go, simple as that. So let's put that to one side and we'll bring in the jerry can. So there you go, you can see the pin wash all done there. And then it's just a matter of picking up some of the pigment and then brushing it on. There we go, you can see that nice dusty effect at the bottom there. Now the problem with um, using pastels 
instead of pigments is that if you now touch the pigments with your fingers or anything like that it's going to pull it off and possibly even leave finger marks etc so you may want to do this once you've placed your jerry can in place or you can fix it in with watered down varnish or UPVO the only problem with that is obviously it will distort the the final look on the jerry can so there we go that's a jerry can done old school hope you've enjoyed that one and now we'll move on to the next <laughs>